Random thoughts on the Acropolis, Coca-Cola, Daedalus 88, accepts from a letter to Tom Spring 1988. By Stefan Deloria is read by Phobos. And so it seemed, on that particular evening, the lights of the Chrysler Building, and the Empire State Building, were surrounded by a pink halo, to no avail. It only matters that they shine, when I use their light, as an inspiration to write you, and ultimately the world. I have written by moonlight beneath a million asterisms. The original song of the heavens, has eluded me too, but perhaps because I think it has been silenced. The minstrel may have strummed an open chord, and set his instrument down, and walked away with it still ringing, for all I know. The ancient clay flute, with the three secret chambers, which contemporary mortals only know through the use of x-rays, may have been buried, with the breath that so pleased its maker. My soul wonders what songs were played on ancient instruments. Nobody gives a shit about melodies that were sung thousands of years ago. You know Tom, I used to infrequently frequent, one fiddler's green, a coffee house dedicated to the preservation of ancient music. But the proprietors of that establishment, turned their backs on contemporary melodies, in favor of tunes, that were passed down through generations, did it ever occur to them that those quaint and ancient songs, were once virgin melodies? As it was said by Walter Matthew in the movie, a new leaf that were, keeping alive a tradition that died before you were born. For years I've tried to perfect a song about a song, that we should all sing along, but I'm afraid that someday it might become a co commercial before I continue, I must explain a train of thought that just occurred. I was trying to think of Maxfield Parrish who painted ecstasy, with turquoise skies and amber sun on marble peaks. Anyhow, it occurred to me that I once visited the Acropolis, in Greece, in the late autumn of 1972. At that time I looked through the coin-operated binoculars, at the city, determined to find somewhere upon the hazy horizon, a word or symbol of Coca-Cola. Sure enough I saw the red mandala, with the white flowing letters inside. At that particular juncture in Greek history, it was possible, to put a coin into one of them binoculars, to find evidence of coke. That may not be true today, but it was back in 1972. The amber, morning Mediterranean sun, turns the pillars of the Parthenon a golden marble, and the bronze skin of Daedalus 88, the contemporary Icarus, is rich as he mounts his wings. The air is without a breeze as the song begins. A cow floats between the pillars with the sky painted on and on. Thousands of coke bottles, edges gleaming in the light, are each filled with a varying measure of coke. If there had been the slightest wind, to prevent the delicate flight, the bottles would have sounded a warning. But there is only silence. A thousand white-robed contemporary Icarus clones, ascend from the shadow and pick a designated bottle. As the flying machine takes off from atop the Parthenon, they put the bottles to their lips and start the song. It is an eerie apparition, the bottle song, and the smooth flight of the flying machine. I forget the name of it, actually it was Daedalus 88, the white-robed clones, clutching their coke bottles, run down the side of the Acropolis taking the occasional swig, and blowing a note here and there. The song is taken up, all the way to the shore. The flying machine flies on, the sun no longer amber, but a glistening line on the wings. 72 miles, she flies powered only by the strength of man, pedaling, until with just 50 yards to go, she plops in the water. For effect, when I create my Grecian masterpiece of the flight of Icarus, I will cast my red-haired buddy and thousand red-haired lookalikes to star in the production. Unless, of course Tom, you consider yourself too unique to have a thousand lookalikes. Bye for now, Stefan. Postscript Sad is the flight of Icarus. Who fell before the sun? Although man has hit the ground, his fall is just begun.